Hey, all right there, I'm Russell. Um, this week's episode, we're looking at uh, relationships between fathers and sons, masculinity, and all the things that that entails. I mean, obviously, I'm only capable of looking at my own relationship with my own father, Russell and Ron. And uh, the, the way that we're going to examine this relationship, which, you know, I mean, it's a relatively normal relationship. My dad sort of, uh, like, my mum and dad got divorced when I was a kid. My dad left when I was about sort of six months old. Didn't really sort of grow him, saw him at weekends, the normal kind of stuff. And now, because there's sort of unresolved issues, because I don't feel I've crossed that final threshold into becoming a man, I've decided to challenge my dad to a bit of a fight. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to fight him right up nice, <laughs> give him the battery in of his life. Or, or will I? Or will I? Because my dad is much butcher, gruffer, tougher than I. You know, like the relationships you have, it's all bubbles under the surface. No one really ever says what they actually mean, do they? Everything's all a bit pappy and rubbish. You know, if we're all slugging away at each other's gutty wuts, then at least we'll know what we feel about each other. So that we can enter into this with some sort of understanding of exactly what kind of can of worms it is we're opening, uh, we're off to see the eminent psychologist David Cohen, writer of the Father's Book. And uh, like you know, we're going to talk to him about whether or not what I'm doing is dangerous in fighting my father. I mean, like the way I started thinking about it was about sort of masculinity and what my view was of my masculinity and whether I really feel like a man. Mm. The reason I wanted to talk to you is because I wanted to get sort of a, what the picture, the, a broader picture of um, the father-son relationship. Because all I have is obviously my own particular yeah. relationship with my father, which was like sort of like, you know, he sort of left when I was like about six months old. Saw him sometimes at weekends when I was a kid, you know, but like sometimes wouldn't see him for a long period of time. So here I am in a bar with my dad, both of us drinking water. It is sparkling, he's a devilish sort of a character, with a bit of a twinkle in his eye and a twinkle in his drink and all. So, um, yeah, dad. You sort of like kind of left when I was young, innit? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, actually. Were you? Mm. Yeah, what was you thinking? Well, I don't know how old you were, but at the beginning, of course, like all divorces, it's difficult, you know. Yeah. And we fell out completely, Babs and I, and I didn't see you for a while. Right. Really? Yeah, I don't know how long it was. I remember coming back. How old was I <coughs> been then? Like a toddler? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, you were probably... You would just talk, you could talk. So I don't know how old that would make you. I'm not good in these kind 15, of things. 15, 16, <laughs> I think. I started piping up. Oh, this is a bit. No, I don't know. Well, how old can you can start to talk? I think about 18 months. So it would have been about then. Yeah. And then, because then I used to see you every weekend, didn't I? But then you used to get really emotional about me not turning up late, didn't you? I didn't even realise it was such a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're a little kid, all in your little coat and your little jacket, waiting all nicely, yeah. sat there with my mum. And I do remember as well, I used to remember you coming and sort of having sort of an argument, mum being quite emotionally volatile, yeah. you being very forthright and abrupt, you know, mad and intense and stuff. If I stop being personal to you and having a personal conversation, mm -hmm. wear my pundit hat, most men do not have very good relationships with their fathers. Right. Ask him about his father. Ask him about his relationship with his father. So what, what kind of, I mean, that, what, have you got any memories of that at no, all? No, very little, really. Well? No, not no, significant. Well, of course, he died when he was too young. Yeah, yeah. Oh, late. So that's strange, ain't it? Because that means you ain't got a... A role model. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. For, for that, so that's obviously going to, you know, that's part of the legacy, I suppose. I mean, once interviewed one of the world's great uh, psychologist's sons, a guy, he was a guy called uh, John Watson, and he said the only time he felt really loved by his father, who wrote endless bestsellers about how to be a parent, was when they were doing woodwork together. The expression of love between sons and fathers and fathers and sons has often been through those very practical things. Oh, we've gotten better, I think, since I've been an adult. I think since that holiday when we went to Thailand yeah, and that. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Do you remember that first night? The Mandarin Palace Hotel in Hong Kong. Hong Kong yeah. All them women sort of wearing swimsuits, sort of praying about. And I remember thinking, like, so as soon as we got in, I thought, oh, fucking hell, look at all them women in swimsuits. I can't wait to get back to my school and tell my mates about all them women in swimsuits. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, and then, I then, wish I had me flippers. <laughs> 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 no, I remember looking at them thinking, bloody hell, I can't wait to tell my mates. And then one of them came over and started talking to me. And I thought, oh, wow, I can't wait to tell my mates. So <laughs> one of them came to me and she started touching my dick and kissing me. And stuff. I thought, fucking hell, I can't wait to tell my mates. I'm, I'm like, well, I actually ended up telling my mates. It was about how three prostitutes <laughs> in, the, in the back of a taxi. 
<laughs> See, well, the clicker clack of their high heels on a marble hotel lobby floor, mm. going, going up to that beautiful room, and like sort of you being there with that woman who came back for nothing, didn't she? The the manager of the of the brothel, yeah, the she madam. Me, didn't she? She, yeah, 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 big success with her. And then you had that <laughs> other one, and then I had that lovely young Filipino one, didn't I? You fell in love every time. <laughs> yeah, I fell in love with that Filipino one. I remember, I remember sort of in the like bit in the night, sort of after everything was finished, about four o'clock in the morning. I remember her saying, uh, like it was all sort of lovely tranquil, a lovely tranquil atmosphere, and I'd already sort of held her in my arms and gone into the, out of the balcony of the hotel, and looked over Hong <laughs> Kong with her, well, over to the building that was like, sort of there, actually, sort of looked over that building. And, uh, and I never then, looked out the window. No, well, you were busy, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, and I remember sort of sat down on the bed with her, sort of like in stroking her hair, and she goes something like, um, she goes, uh, Russell, I have to leave before I fall in love with you. And then from the other bed goes, Oh, blue nil! Oh, I'm going to be sick! <laughs> Me, all sort of teary the next day. And then I remember waking up sort of the next morning and there being sort of a sort of half filled glasses of sort of champagne everywhere and empty sort of champagne bottles and sort of the signs of their sort of presence everywhere. I remember you sort of reading the paper, going, Did you wear a condom with that bird last night? I went, Oh, no, 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 never. You went, You should have. Making jokes about women with big tits and all that kind of stuff. And we were, you know, we sort of got on that vibe together. But I think that's like the woodwork, mate. I think that's yeah. like, you know, that's, yeah. the, that's the thing, that's the world, that's what we do, me and him do, like, yeah. sort of what I can do sort of effortlessly and without sort of, you know, without really compromising ourselves, you know. It's a good word, Com so compromise yourself, say it's not good enough. You're aware, of course, like, like in sort of like Greek myth and all that kind of stuff, that sort of, to become a man, you have to at some point overcome your father, otherwise really you'll be trapped forever in a world of childhood, and that's not a place I'd like to see myself trapped for too long. The long, the tall, and the short of it was, is that I wondered if on like Thursday you'd come, like well, on, on Thursday come to a, a boxing gym in the East End with us, do a little bit of training, then on Friday a bit of a bout, <laughs> a bit of a boxing match, father and son on the same bill in the same ring, brawling <laughs> it out in, in boxing gloves and that. But you know, Queensbury rules, of course. What do you think about that as an idea? I'm not. Overly enthusiastic. <laughs> Why well, Everyone thinks that I'll lose. Including me. <laughs> I think it's an interesting symbol. It's a symbol. It's right. a symbol. This is not about like sort of me saying like a, you know, being furiously trying to avenge my childhood because I don't think there's anything to be avenged. Not do I. In that manner. Enough. Oh, don't you? No, I no, really don't. That's my question. Was it? Yeah, yeah. No, but of course. What, what, you know, in this day and age, a third of marriages break up. In so many cases, one or the other, both parties leave, you know. Like, I don't know, I mean, maybe, I, I suppose in a way I would like it if had a grown up with you and mum together in sort of like a typical family, like, you know, textbook Dickensian yeah. chocolate box family. That wasn't the option. The option was to grow up in a house with two people constantly bickering and arguing. That's the option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the more likely alternative, not the one you've just described. Your mum obviously did something rather right since she was your main caregiver. Do you, you think so? Oh, you? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, because you want to, you know, you want to find out about yourself. You wouldn't be doing this. You've actually taken quite a lot of risks. You know, come here now to tell my mum about the whole dad fight. This idea does end with me in a ring with my dad. Aha! Monkey! <laughs> Do we do this? <laughs> we look horrible. You're lovely. Fuck off. You're my mum. <laughs> what are you doing? You're really mean. Turn that light out. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Turn the light out. <laughs> Don't be so softly. Oh, come straw, No. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yes. Um, we, we spoke to dad earlier. Yes. And, uh, I asked him about the, the boxing match, yes. and he said he'll do it. I so don't like the idea, really. Why is that, Mum? Well, because I think it's, um, well, he's getting on a bit. Yeah. It, might, it might stress him a bit. It might stress him? What about me? Yeah, but Dad's older. Yeah. And he might have a heart attack. <laughs> in the ring. He won't have a heart attack in the ring, he's all right. You should have seen him today. He was all confident, saying, oh, I'll lay you out, you'll be out for weeks afterwards, all that kind of stuff. Who's going to watch you do it? Oh, a few people, you can come if you want. Do you want to come on Friday? No, I've got a date. You've got a date on Friday? Oh, my God, Mother, <laughs> who is it this time? 
You're not saying. You're not saying. Fine, so you're shy. Yeah. Saying yeah. So what? What do you think? What do you think will happen? I just think it might be humiliating for both of you. But it could be bonding, couldn't it? Bonding, having a fight. Well, yeah, couldn't it? it? Could like you know iron out a few differences and stuff like that. It depends why you're really doing it. Well, because it's like rights of passage thing, isn't it? To make you out. It's not like, you know I mean, I don't want to go. It's, I, I sort of. You know, the reason is, it's because I feel like sort of, you can't really become a man until you've resolved certain issues. And I want to be a man, I'm a man. Are you really, are you really <laughs> um, going to fight him? Yeah, in boxing gloves with, you know, so we do are you really going to try and knock him out? Um, yeah, I suppose that's a point, oh, isn't good. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm going to see a sort of a sports psychologist, yeah. but, you know, so that I'll have the advantage of sort of being in a zone where victory is the only thing I can see, like a mm. beam of cancerous light. Yeah. And, uh, like, and then, you know, and then... Well, your poor dad isn't going to have a sports psychologist. Do you think that's unfair? Do you think he's Totally have... unfair. But was it fair when I was growing up and I had a man influence? Was it me and my poor old mother? I didn't leave the breast till I was 13 yeah. years old. Is that fair? <laughs> Who it is it? Yeah, no, but... Uh... <laughs> Maybe your dad will be smart and bring his own. Just, just you better not hope he doesn't bring some you know, great boxing trainer along. Oh my God! Yeah, Caz Dimaggio. Or no, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, it's the next day, and now I'm just outside the venue where the fight's going to be held. It's a rough and tough East End gym where, like, tomorrow the fight's going to take place. But today, I'm going to have a little bit of training with one of the butch lads down there, you know, to sort of take me through the moves. And, as well, I'm meeting a peculiar Mrs Mesmer figure who's going to give me some mind control techniques, maybe even put me under to make me feel a bit more optimistic about fighting my dad. This is the gym now. I can smell the musk of men. It smells like school changing room. Stinks of nuts in here! Hey, so, Tanya, what is your, the official title of your job? I am a clinical hypnotist. A clinical hypnotist? Forward slash hypnotherapist. Ooh, forward slash. <laughs> forward slash psychotherapist. Wow, you've got a lot of qualifications. Yes. I've okay. got seven sets of letters after my name. Seven sets yeah, of letters? Which nobody believes, and I always no, ask I... me to tell them what they are. <laughs> uh, okay, well, what are they? And I'll see if I can make some nice anagram out of them. Sounds to me like witchcraft, <laughs> meddling with folks' noggins. Okay, well, we're going to talk about hypnosis now. I dreamed of you on my farm. I dreamed of you in my arms. But dreams are always wrong. My can I never dreamed I'd hurt you. I never dreamed I'd lose you. In my dreams I'm always strong. Every bone in your body will look forward now the creek to the is boxing rising. match. Boxing classes. And all my boxing lessons. Burn. Boxing strongly. Boxing well, picture Muhammad Ali, picture your father's face afterwards, feel the confidence, throwing good punches. The moment you enter the ring, you'll be fearless, really enjoying it. One, eyes open, wide awake. Well, bit of the old hypnosis, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> nice one then, Tanya. <laughs> well, you're quite clearly stark crazy mad, <laughs> so I'm off for a bit of a boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. How fit are you and how fit's your dad? I'm not a very fit person. I use drugs, I drink too much, I smoke. I, you know, the only exercise I get is fucking. You know, that's the only exercise I get. Hello? Hello. Okay. Yeah, screw up. Jump off. Mission one accomplished. We use our knuckles here. Our three knuckles. I'm getting really excited for you now. Yeah. Okay, you ready to go? First of all, come sideways on. You stand like this, you give too much target to your opponent. Don't give your dad any target. Sideways <laughs> on. Hands up in the air. Point to the fist. 
Bring your elbows in towards your body. Twist sideways. Bob and weave. Good. Slide. Right. So I can have We're just going to go for 10 press-ups. Oh, good man. Keep weaving. Good. Good. Make sure that left shoulder's facing me. Good. Lovely work. Come on, come on, get some. Let's go. Slip twice. Over here. The jab. Restart. Jab. Good. And you can bounce off the ropes as well. So some of people have been coming in the right now. Doing this back. Well, you know, it weren't me that abandoned a small tiny baby, all defenses and that there, was it? Nor lured him into a misogynistic lifestyle of womanizing, and that the only way I could win approval. Good shot. Good. Jack, Jack. What in it? Bang, come on, Jack. Good, and again. Good, and again. Three, four, hands up, four. Is it wrong having a fight with me, Dad? Yeah. Life, making me feel this guilty. Session over. Brilliant. Good stuff for you boys. Hey, today is fight day. Judgment day, they'd probably call it, if there were professional boxers involved. But I think the whole reason I would have come up with an idea like this is because I've got unresolved issues with my dad. And like seeing him in the ring the other day and seeing him like, you know, looking old, you know, that was painful and ugly, but still I've got, you know, that, and I, I saw it again this morning, I've got sort of a lot of anger and unhappiness, and that's what this thing is about. So, like, you know, this boxing match ain't a joke, and I'm not going to just sort of, like, plod through it for a laugh, like a nice little exhibition exercise. I'm angry and unhappy. Did you have talks with your father about, you know, did you ever say to your father, I miss this, I want this, any of that stuff? Why do you think I want to do this? this boxing match? Um, I'm not sure you want to prove something, but I'm not sure whether you want, want to prove it to you or me. Shall I tell you what it's about? I hate myself, Dad. I hate myself. I hate being alive. And one day, mate, you'll get a phone call, Russell's killed himself. And one day you'll get a phone call, Russell's dead. And mum, that's going you know, to kill my mum. You'll take it on the chin because you've, I don't think you've ever really given a fuck. I don't think you've ever really given a fuck about me. Because like, ultimately, when I was a baby, when I couldn't defend myself, when I couldn't do nothing, you left. You were more important. It was more important to pursue your ambition than to look after me. Because well, I don't know you leave left. to get away from you. Like, you know, like all marriages that break down, and I guess all kids that are left in that situation who think the same, yeah. the reality is very different, of course. The, the people part to get away from each other. At least you had some tranquility in that house. You didn't have two people constantly bickering at one another and Bollocks, Dad, that's not a fucking reason. You left, you left for you, you didn't leave for me. You left, you, couldn't, you didn't want to deal with it, no? I feel inadequate. I feel like I'm not a man. And I feel that like I can't be a man until the man that made me lies defeated at my feet. Right, remember Set what I said, all about. Let's go, on. Round one. Right, now, in the box, a match for my dad. Is that true? Like the way you keep my Mark, Mark, come back. Can't be satisfied unless you're Go Rob. How'd you feel? Sort so, of weird. It was a real good first round. <laughs> In the jab. Work behind the jab. Okay, seconds 
We will last for the whole of your life. Eight. Tucked up for the rest of this round. Do you step in favour, yeah? A nice right hand. Let me see you take it up now, yeah? Okay, I'll take it. Come on. And that, grab hold of him. Don't be scared to hold someone, as I told you. Last round. Last round, let's go. Last round, that's good. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Come on, Thank you very much gentlemen, through this sport of yours we've, I've learned like, a lot of discipline and a lot about masculinity which we've got this episode about to be about and a lot about being a gentleman so thank you all. Well done. Oh, it did my head in, it freaked me out because it's a cell of existence and all that was in there was my dad. Yeah, so I felt mad. I do feel a bit better about myself out here, I haven't done that, I feel like I've resolved a few things, I feel like it did have some value. I do feel like I had some value. I felt guilty in there as well. But I feel like, you know, yeah, that I should be sort of stronger, both mentally and physically. That I should do more exercise and that I should be stronger mentally. I should, the problems that I have in my mind are in my head. They're not in my family, they're in my head. So I should stop uh, you know. I'm going to go and talk to him now anyway. I'm going to have to say. Do you feel okay though? Yeah, Are you glad you've done it? Yeah. yeah, it's been a great experience. I'm really glad you've done it. It really helped me out. It's made me realise that the problems I have are in my head, they ain't oh, outside of me. They ain't never been anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but then who That's put like that whole inspiration rules. inside of my mind? <laughs> 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 yeah, nice. All right, so let, let's go. Shall we, shall we go for a drink now? Yeah. Get back to stuff we do properly. Who thinks I've got more of a chance with? <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink you under the table as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cheers. Thanks, Dad. There's a significant distance in like uh, our outlooks, you know. I mean, I'm sort of, so, and I suppose that's what by doing this, I'm trying to sort of, you know, bring those things together to reach some sort of, you know, con closure to mm. these. The, the, the but you can't piles. reach closure with your father. Right. Your father's 55 years old. You're going to have, you know, if your father's in good health, and he sounds like a, you know, a healthy man. Mm. Um, you're going to be, he's going to be 80 and you're going to be 45 or whatever, or whatever. It's going to go on. All you can do is have a footing so that your relationship with your dad can grow. You've got to find a pub around here then. Let's come over. There's one up here called the Owl and the Pussycat. Help me carry that bag. Do you? Yeah, that's right. Oh, proud, are you? <laughs> I love carrying a bag. I got it here, didn't I? Look at me, I can do a couple more rounds. <laughs> <laughs> you silly bastard. <laughs>